You know, in additive manufacturing, getting precise, repeatable parts requires very careful control of the print head, the nozzle, or the melt pool. I'm with Will Land, he's business development manager for Aerotech. Now, Will, uh, tell me about the, that level of control. When we talk about control, uh, I come from an industrial environment where control is plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch. What are we looking at in this environment? Oh, we're talking about fractions of a micron or single digit microns as far as the timing of where the motion control equipment is versus where you want a laser spot placed or the amount of uh, microliters or nanoliters you want out of a, a very precision print head and um, the ability to control at that level and coordinate with all the motion subsystems is how you're going to overcome some of the hurdles from uh, the prototyping space. Now on a macro scale, uh, our, we used to think about ball screws, we think about stepper motors in this case, but you're talking about micron level precision at that point. What is, what's the difference sort of technologically between moving a, a conveyor belt, if you will, and, and doing something at that level of repeatability and precision? Uh, so precision comes down to determinism and, and how well you can predict and model your system. So, a, a conveyor belt type system has a lot of compliance in the drive mechanism, which is difficult for you to predict how it's going to react. So um, obviously we're able to achieve single digit microns and pretty high precision numbers with things like a ball screw stage. But obviously if you want higher precision, you go to things like linear motor stages where friction's a little more predictable and loads are a little more predictable. Uh, we even manufacture uh, nano positioning stages that use piezo drives as their drive system. We make galvanometer scanners. Um, which are effectively a rotary linear motor um, with a spring, uh, things that you can predict the friction and the loading and get a better model. So the better you can model anything, whether it's economics or motion control, the, the better you can drive outcomes. Now in the machine tool space, uh, they've now moved to a point where the, their accuracy and, and repeatability is, is at a point where they worry about temperature drift. And that it's so we, we actually have heated and cooled uh, tooling in some cases. Is temperature a factor here? Uh, absolutely. So. We heat and cool various components in any machine, particularly depending on the application. We even have software features uh, such as Thermocomp is a new software feature we came out with where we actively model in complicated fashion the internal components of a drive, monitor temperatures of in different components of the drive, and then behind the scenes change the commanded output to that stage to get the actual global positioning you want as a customer without you having to worry about that. Uh, uh, you have an interesting product in the sense of you have a mechanical component to this, which is high precision, but you also have an electronic component to this. You've got to, you've got to control angle this. And the control angle, of course, traditionally we think of, of relatively simple feedback systems where we, we approximate the target, we measure, and then we perhaps have the error, have it again, have it again, and we nibble our way toward the goal. Right. Right. Uh, is, I, I assume you need a more sophisticated strategy than that to make this work. Absolutely, so measure and verify is what you're referring to, and uh, almost no Aerotech systems rely on measure and verify. We do all real-time control um, because going back to that additive space, if you want to overcome some of those problems in additive where you have to coordinate other subsystems like a laser subsystem or the nozzle subsystem along with maybe other in situ sensors, you need to coordinate that all with the motion. And so in order to do that, you need to be getting real-time information about where your actual tool point is, whether it's a nozzle or a laser or anything else. Uh, and in order to do that, you rely on very high refresh rates. Uh, for example, this Galva system is getting its feedback loop closed at almost 200 kilohertz, and we are actively using that information uh, once every however many microseconds to make decisions, whether it's laser firing, uh, faults, or uh, data capture. So we can even do data capture at that rate. Um, and along those lines, in order to push the envelope as far as how fast we can close the loop on active systems and, and how much better we can coordinate other subsystems. Uh, we are in the process of a comp as a company of moving towards fiber optic, or fiber optic communication systems um, just to increase bandwidth. Now, Will, as this technology speeds up and we're seeing uh, um, build time sh getting shorter and shorter and shorter, there's pressure to make bigger and bigger parts. Now, some industries like aerospace, for example, of course, what's the holy grail? I mean, they like to make an aileron or they ultimately like to scale up and do uh, perhaps a wingtip or even a whole wing. Now, is as the as the motion, the range of motion gets much larger at the same time, does that put a challenge on maintaining accuracy and repeatability? Absolutely. So, obviously, Length scale is extremely important in determining how precise you can be. Um, most of your, most of the influences on your accuracy 
tend to be length dependent, so they, they scale up with length. So things like temperature, uh, temperature tends to make parts grow, and they grow as a function of length. So the longer the part, the more it's going to grow with the change in temperature. Um, but those aren't things that you can't overcome. Um, most of those difficulties that are length dependent are well established and known in the motion control industry. Um, people have been trying to overcome them for longer than I've been alive. And if you can understand it and predict it, you can model it and cancel it out via software. Um, so that's typically the route we try to take. Obviously there are ways to make less sensitive machines, but you can never make a perfectly insensitive machine. So your ability to model the system and predict uh, changes in accuracy with different external influences uh, will make you much better at making an accurate part. And as far as large parts are concerned, actually what you're seeing in the background here is our ability to coordinate and combine the motion of uh, a scanner system with a larger gantry system. And this allows you to get um, you know, scanner level performance on any scale you want. So you can place the scanner on as large of a gantry as you can manufacture. You can get Galvo scanner level dynamic performance over a longer range of travel um, through a feature we call infinite field of view. Now it's, uh, how would a machine maker approach Aerotech? Does it happen at the design stage or is it happen at the concept stage? Does someone turn around and say, well, I'd like to make a, a six by 10 foot working envelope and I have no idea how to, how to handle motion control? You really tend to get the best results with, with any vendor in my opinion, but in particular Aerotech, when the earlier in the process you start. Um, we have project uh, system engineers where they work in teams on individual customer projects and individual customer applications. And uh, the earlier you start, the more we can work cross-curricularly as a group uh, with the vendor and Aerotech to actually help design the machine that you specifically need to do the specific job you have. Will Land at Aerotech says, approach your vendor early in the process for accurate, repeatable motion control.